anybody want to talk about the the newsletters going out in with the creator mode being required to turn on? I just got five um, invitations this morning to sign up for yes. newsletters. Yes, I I got this. I got the same. So kind of quick recap there before we get into crash course on targeting. So uh, newsletters before was it Mary? Was it by invite or just kind of? It was uh, by invite only to a very few select. Um, I think it was mostly high profile, like people that were you know really active on LinkedIn and like Andy Foot had one. Beth Granger, she has one. one yeah. She's had one for Leah, a little bit, I think Leah but, Turner, John Asperian. Yeah, like, okay. so, so I kind of think like high names, high level, but um, I haven't got, I'm in creator mode. I haven't gotten it yet. So I'm going to reach out to my manager and say, look, what's up? Well, let's do this today. Uh, we are having a really special guest speaker. It's me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're going to do a... We're going to do just a really quick crash course on targeting. Now, here, here's the deal. And I'll, this is going to be like, I'm not going to do any slides. We're just going to straight up workshop in, in the platform. But just as a, as a kind of high level overview. So we say targeting. Targeting is kind of broad, right? Uh, you can, it's, I need to find something. Boom, I'm going to target it. So you're, you're on LinkedIn. You might be needing to look for people. You might be needing to target a company. You might be needing to target something for content engagement. Maybe you're talking about ads and there's targeting all baked into there. So targeting is pretty broad. And just to set the framework here and expectations, we are talking about uh, we're targeting people with the end goal of you getting to know those people because of opportunities for yourself or your company. So ideally, this is going to be some kind of social selling. So on LinkedIn, you don't talk to companies, you talk to people. So that's kind of, I feel like a really, a really good place to begin here. So we're going to be talking about the, essentially the people search function. And I wanted to talk about it because um, in my estimation, as far as kind of the technical, how to learn things, I think that mastering search is one of the most super critical things that you can master when you're on the platform, as far as like how to use the platform, becoming a great copywriter or salesperson, this is like a, a skill off the platform. If you want to learn something on LinkedIn, got to, you've got to master people search. If you don't master people search um, and your goal is social sales, what we find is you end up wasting way too much time, just kind of combing through search and seeing if you want to talk to a person. So it ends up taking your time efficiency and just flushing it down the toilet. So did you like my toilet emoji on the, <laughs> on the email? So if you don't master people search, it really kills your time efficiency. And there have been times where we're onboarding a business and they're like, yeah, we're, we're using even sales nav search. I'm like, great, can you send me your search? I'll take a look in there and I'm like, how did you do that? What are you, I totally appreciate the effort, but there, there's just, for sure, a lot of uh, education. And I know some people on here, you are search ninjas. So I do want to talk about a, a few things today, and then I'm going to jump right into the platform. Uh, we're, I'm going to talk about uh, just really quick going over what what the different search fields are looking for on your profile, because I, I do think there's some confusion there with how keywords work. I've seen that a lot of confusion there. I've seen some confusion on what title versus headline and that kind of thing. So we'll kind of gloss over that. And then um, we'll talk about definitely some Boolean. Uh, I, you've, got to, you've got to use Boolean, period. And then we'll do, if we have time, we'll jump into um, lead lists, which is going to be a thing in sales nav. And then I'll show you how we use uh, Google Sheets to collaborate for continual re revisions on targeting. So if you're part of a team or you're an agency or you just want to bookmark something so that you don't have to retype everything, it becomes very handy. So that's kind of where we're headed and let me just make sure all of my new messages are popped down. Okay, share my screen so you don't have to see my, my face anymore. <clears throat> all right, so uh, really quick, since uh, Monty's not here today, I'm kind of monitoring the chat and everything. 
while we're going to go through this here, let's just do this format for those of you who, if, if it's your first time. So I'm going to just kind of talk here for a little bit. Feel free to toss your questions in the chat. And then when we're done here, we're going to move into the panelist time. And then after panelist time, we'll move into open Q&A. So if something gets brought up or you want to, me to hit something later, the panelist is something later, just put it in the chat. That's the easiest way. Okay. So when you go to normal, just linkedin.com, there's really no easy way to pull up all of the people search filters. You know, let me turn on my, my mouse here. There's no way for me to just do one click and then boom, show me all of the people search filters. It's kind of a pain in the butt. And the only thing that you can really do is go to this big one search field here and then type something. Let's just do, maybe we want to find safety officers. Safety officer. And then it pulls a bunch of stuff in. And I could go here to people. And then it's really janky. <laughs> it's like, why can't I just go there? And then, oops, sorry. Dimitri is not here. One second. And then when you start with the keyword search up here, for those of you who don't know, this is, the, this is essentially the keyword. To get to the people search, you have to put in the keyword search, but keyword search is like, keyword in my opinion is one of the absolute last things you should use as a search filter because keyword is looking at, it's just anywhere on the whole profile, which we can get to in just a minute. So I really, I really think that the way the user interface is set up is to set people up to not really do a good job because you have to start with keywords, keywords, which is not ideal. And then you've got to go through like three clicks just to be able to go here to all filters. It's like, why would you do that? You know, why would you do that? So uh, just for what it's worth, if you are in sales nav, let me just jump over here. Yeah, so Isaac, one, one thing, Isaac, can I point out one thing? You don't have to type anything in for sales sales officer. You can just put it, just press enter there, and it'll pop, press enter and hit all filters, and and get there. So all if I go, goes on the so right, go, you press enter and all filters, and you're there. So just go here, search nothing. Oh, I guess that works. Yeah, true. It's just a little, little easier. Yeah, for sure. But for for your average person, I don't I don't know that most of your average Joes will hit enter on empty, but that's a good, totally good luck good figuring hack. that one out. Right. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. If you are on sales nav, it's a little bit more straightforward because you've got all filters and then there's, this is essentially people search. So uh, if you're on sales nav, it's a little bit easier to get to. I'm not going to do recruiter today. So let's do this. Then let's just kind of really quick do a, a field match. We have any uh, volunteers here so that we can look at your profile who wants some free press. I love free press. <laughs> All right. Who was that? Was that Judy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, thanks again, Judy, for uh, sharing last week on polls. That was fantastic. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So let's do this because, again, I do feel like there's some confusion on where the fields live. So if I go to people, all filters, obviously a connection, first, second, third degree, pretty straightforward location, pretty straightforward current company. So current company is going to be actually all the way down here. It's going to be right here. So Judy is currently working here. And what She's that, also cur currently just, here. I What's that? Forbes, because you're going to get a lot more people in the Forbes uh, current company. So if you want to do that. Yep. But just, so if you're looking in the current company, this is going to be looking nowhere up here at all. It's exclusively going to be looking at a company where Judy is currently working. So anything that's closed out is not going to be eligible in that search. So right here, JCon, this is the end. Everything for Judy from here all the way up, they are all eligible in the company search, which is great because if someone's working at a company now is really probably the only time you want to talk to them, can cause problems uh, in other contexts where we're talking about down here, like the company, see that where there's company here, and then there's company here, current company. So the difference between these two is this is I'm selecting one company and it's going to have a, a 
company page living there compared to down here. This is not very clear because of the way that they've named it, but this is company name. So this is a definitive singular, there's one Google company page or Microsoft or Facebook. Down here, you are looking at the actual company name. So it's, it's very helpful, very helpful for a number of reasons. Uh, if Amazon, for example, Amazon has a lot of variations of their pages. So does IBM, so does a lot of companies will have a lot of different variations. And instead of typing in one, two, three, and trying to select all the different regional or, or global versions, you can maybe just go down here to company and search it. And I believe that when you do a search here for company, it is now in its current company as well. So keep that in mind. But again, both of those are only going to be pulling from where the work history is currently says dash present. Okay. Uh, moving down, industry. Industry is looking for, it's actually not on the front end of a profile. There's no place on here where it says Judy's industry. And there's a lot of confusion because what happens is there are two places where industry lives. One is you set it on your profile. The other is you set it on your company page. And there is 100% a lot of confusion when people are looking to target an industry and they do a person search and a person often forgets to update their industry or they've confused their role in the company with the industry, which we've talked about a few times in the past. A good example here is if I'm an accountant at a lawn care company, what industry do I choose? It's like a semi-personal profile. I'm an accountant. Well, I'm, I'm guessing my industry is accounting. Or you just see how the confusion can happen there? So if you're needing to target an industry, doing it on people search is not that reliable. So please keep that in mind. Profile language, uh, me being an American, sorry, everybody, we really just deal with English. So we're typing everything in English and I don't ever really mess with this. But if you are wanting to find people who are bilingual and you speak that language for any hundred reasons, you can do the language there. The gear is shaking his head like, uh. <laughs> Uh, open to is another thing here. I don't, do you have open to? I do. Yeah. I think it's down the bottom somewhere. Uh, blah, 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 blah. It's like in the other stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, cares about, I don't know. It's usually down at the bottom. It's in your like. Other... Oh, is it right here? Is it highlights? Yeah. I think that, oh, now they put it on highlights. That's interesting. Uh, so op open to is a section on your profile. Not everybody has it turned on, but you can do here. There's just not a whole lot even going on. Pro bono consulting, join a nonprofit service categories. This is for everybody who has turned on service provider. And this lives right here, providing services. See all details. So if somebody has not turned on their service provider section, it, they won't be eligible, but that's where it lives. This also Service categories, not in sales nav. Okay, let's go down to keywords the, or the keywords section. Again, it's a little bit confusing because technically this field right here is the keyword field. <laughs> it's like, these are not keywords. Uh, you can type text there, but they're definitely not the keywords. So let's work our way from here to here. Keywords right up here. This is going to look for everything on the whole entire profile. And again, this is where I see a lot of confusion when someone will share the search that they've been using is they'll really be wanting to use a title or an attribute about a company. And they put it in the keyword search up here. And the keyword field looks at anything anywhere on the entire profile. So if you typed inbound or certification or mastering or whatever, anywhere, as long as it's text on a profile, keyword is going to pull it up. And if you are needing to create a laser focused list of people to engage with for sales, it's like the worst way to do it because it could just be living anywhere. Almost every single time you are needing to start with title and company. Those are the two most popular, important ones is title and company. So that's so why I said using keyword, if I'm going to use it, it's going to be last. I'll start with title, maybe company. And then if there are a bunch of variations of titles, I'll try to clean it up with Boolean, which I'll talk about in a minute. And then if we can't clean it up with Boolean and the title, uh, or if there's a certain kind of um, 
common theme on people's profiles to exclude, we can exclude them here, or we can do an inclusion, which we can talk about here in a little bit. So it makes sense with the keyword being everywhere and then title, actually, you know, I didn't even say. So title is going to be not the headline. I see a lot of confusion there. So this is your headline. Headline is displayed all over on the platform, but the title is gonna be right here. This is the title. So that's a current title. Cause remember, just like there's a current uh, role open here. There's the, sorry, that's the company name. Sorry, Judy. There's the title. Here is the, there's the title. There's the title. Oh, Susan, that's awesome. <laughs> that's because of this. <laughs> Su Susan's a panelist, so that's cool. So th that is where when we are doing a, so the guy down here is driving me nuts. And I know if I click it, it's going to open my <laughs> employee's work, <laughs> work computers. <laughs> So when we're doing a title search, it is not pulling for any, from anywhere other than current roles here, right? And it does get a little bit hairy when people have multiple roles open. It's a big problem when people are looking for owner, because if you do title is owner, they might have four jobs open and, you know, it can be just, it can be a problem. So they can own a four, dog technically and show up. I mean, yep. Clearly. Yes. Yep, absolutely. And then company, this this field, again, differentiating between company there and company here. Company in the text search field, you're looking for the company name. And again, I see a little bit of confusion here because people are thinking that this search piece is going to be looking at what lives, the text that lives on the company page, and that is not correct. This is only going to be looking for the, the name of the company. And it's a really good hack to use the company name text search if, if you need to do an industry targeting, because remember how industry at the person search level is not that on point. So sometimes the title can be a great way to figure out the, the industry, right? So I'm thinking- um, I get an example like, for you on that. Um, shoot, like, yeah, I've got one too. Looking for chamber of commerce. Mm -hmm. You put company in quote, chamber of commerce. Yeah. And then you can bring up all the companies that are have Chamber of Commerce in their name. Absolutely. If you're wanting to target maybe um, like landscaping or roofing, they might be industries, but they might not be that great and reliable because of the way that the industry works. You can go to a company and type in roofing or landscaping and include the industry in the company name. It won't reflect 100% of your market share, but they'll definitely be roofing companies. <laughs> Almost all of them will definitely be landscaping companies or lawn care. It's not gonna work for everybody, uh, but sometimes the title qualifies the industry as well, like for food. If you are wanting to talk to somebody in food safety, you don't need to try and wrangle the company name food in any way or industry food. When you type in food safety in the title, it's it qualifies itself because of the title you're using, food safety. You're not gonna find someone that's not in food with the title, current title, food safety, right? So uh, sometimes you can get around the industry limitations that way and making sense so far? That would be Company quotes, name. quotes, right? When you type in food safety. You would want to, to type in quotes. Let's do Boolean here in just a minute. Uh, really quick here, let's do sales nav. A lot of what's in sales nav is gonna be the same. So I don't wanna spend a whole lot of time here, even though you you could. So the naming conventions are a little bit more clear here. Keywords is the same thing as what's going to be living right up here. The keywords is going to look for the whole profile. And then you've got some extra really handy things like who uh, changed jobs or was mentioned in the news or was post has posted on LinkedIn in the last 30 days. This can all be very helpful to overcome the limitations in weekly invites you can create a list of people or companies, which don't have time to, but if you want to search within a selected group of people or companies, you can create a list and then add them to, add them right here. So when you're, when you're doing no search on free or premium, you really only have the available filters here to work with. You can't like take and grab a bucket organize it on your own, and then apply what you've organized on your own within search. So that's what's going on with a lead or person and account or company list. So you can create the list of those two different categories and search for people within them. Very helpful. 
Uh, everything else here is pretty much the same. Seniority level, I really don't like using seniority level usually because it's a bit too broad in my experience. Using current position, extra filters there, those can be very helpful depending on what your initiative is. Company is gonna be working the same. You see where it says here, companies or Boolean. So Boolean is what we'll talk about in a minute, which Judy just referenced as where you can do some symbols to be a little bit, basically you're doing a search within search field, very helpful. Company headcount can be very helpful, but also like I said earlier, as we were joking, people can lie about their headcount. And so I find that if you're going to be doing company headcount, it really tends to be most reliable if you're looking for a company size between what, like the one in 50 bucket and then the uh, 200 to 500 bucket. And then the big, boy. there's not a whole lot of huge companies that have the guts to say we have like, you know, more 10,000 employees. So because what happens is, Smaller companies want to be perceived like they're a big deal. So they fudge on the headcount. And then when they actually become successful, they forget to update it, <laughs> right? And then their, their actual size is, is bigger in real life than what happens on LinkedIn. And then when they get to be really big, somebody is in charge of their LinkedIn company page and that's something that they hit. So it's, keep that in mind as you're doing company headcount. Company type, this is actually very helpful, okay? It's especially nonprofit. If you're selling to nonprofits, that is, there it is right there. Really, really helpful. Also, if you're doing self-employed, if you're selling to solopreneurs, very helpful. These are not available in the normal search. So that's pretty helpful. And then uh, posted content keywords. This is not a normal post. This is an article, unless that's been changed since the last time I checked. That causes confusion as well. Most people don't post articles. They post just a status update. So it's only going to be for articles. Again, unless that's changed. Groups, you can in sales nav look for people who are part of a group without having to join the group first, which can be helpful. And then we'll kind of just let the rest fall because we are running out of time. All just right. One, let's one thing, Isaac, real quick. Um, on, the, on the connections of, like say I know, you know, somebody like uh, Monty Clark is, is really well connected with people I want to do business with then mm -hmm. I can look at his, who he's connected to, who I'm second degree. Correct. So you, an interesting filter you can do on both, the free version and the other, but that's for another conversation. Absolutely. And that is also subject to if the person has turned, yeah. there's a setting in your profile where you can allow people to see who you're connected with. And if somebody has changed that to no one but me, then that won't work. But that's absolutely right, Judy. It's a, a great strategy if you want to do, if, you have a, if you're in good standing with someone and want to sell it to all their friends. <laughs> I've got an exciting new business opportunity for you. <laughs> like, I think my mind went to the MLM thing. Okay, let's talk about uh, Boolean. And again, I'm going to kind of blast through this because I, I just want to get through it. So Boolean, and I'm actually going to go over here. Boolean is, you've got and or not. Is that too small? Here, I'm going to zoom in. Actually, that's going to make everything big. I'll just make the text bigger. Newt. Newt. <laughs> here, we'll do it this way. All right, I'm looking at everybody here who I know is above 50 and just seeing how close they are to the screen. <laughs> uh, so there's and or not, and then there's quotes, and then it has nothing to do with the text it is specifically the quotation marks and then there are there's the parentheses okay so what happens is and or not quotes and parentheses do you remember like a hundred years ago when we were in algebra one Ooh. it's it kind of has that vibe it's it's really not that difficult so let's let's actually go over here to let's use this because I feel like it's a little bit easier. If we are going to do uh, any, let's do, let's do the food safety thing. So if I'm doing food safety, off, I'm doing, I can do food. Let's just do this. Food safety. If I just type in food safety, LinkedIn is going to take a little bit of liberty and it's not going to be an ex exact match. So if you've ever done anything with like Google ads, this is the equivalent of just adding the word that you want to trigger your ad without adding the exact phrase match, quotation marks, same idea. So you can just type it in with no quotes and it's gonna be a little bit more broad than you might want. 
So if you go like this and you do quotation mark food safety, this is saying LinkedIn, I want it to be precise. So quote food safety and quote, very, very, very important. We, in a sales context, we never use title search without quotation marks, unless we're trying to go broad and see what we missed because we want our time to be laser focused. So 100% of the time we use the quotation marks. So again, what's happening here. You don't, you don't put quotation marks around single words though, do you? No. Around a word? No, why would you need around to? a phrase, right? Yeah. Uh, sometimes I would around a single word depending on the search that I'm building. In what, in what situation? I can picture you probably know some situation where that matters. Like if, what if it, there's a dash in the word? Do you need to put quotes around it? I do. I, I do. I default to that too many times, like part-time. Yep. I, I do the, the different variations with plural and with the dashes. I, I do use the quotation marks, yes. Yep. Uh, but for the, for the sake of time, for those of you who aren't familiar, that's a good good point, good question, Mike. So the the quotation marks that's going to make it an exact phrase or word match. The parent actually let's get to parentheses in a minute. And or not, this is kind of like where I was talking about algebra. So what if we wanted to do say food safety um, or maybe we do FSQA? Right? Maybe that's kind of in, along the same lines. Maybe I don't want to just talk to food safety. Maybe I also want to talk to FSQA. So I could do food safety or FSQA. And that means that in the title currently can be food or FSQA, either or. So let's just do this for fun. Makes sense. So it's one or the other. Let's go to the end. So I might do. food and safety. Now the difference here is food safety is one phrase. So they have to be side by side and side by side in that order, food safety. You could do like the food and the or, it's gonna be one or the other. What's gonna happen here is food and safety have to be somewhere in the title. They both have to be present. So or is one or the other and means they're both present but not necessarily in order. So someone could have any kind of crazy variation in their title, as long as food is in there and safety is in there, they're gonna be in, in this mix, okay? So that's the end. And they have to be all, they have to be caps. So if you do not capitalize, the Boolean will not work. And then there's the not, and the not does about what you'd expect. You might want to do, and let's say this is the one thing we do on, with keywords. We always go not retired, <laughs> right? So do I every time. Uh, pretty, uh, pretty much if somebody retired. says they're retired, uh, it's, there's a good chance that they're not going to be a good fit. So not is going to do an exclusion. So I'm just going to put it here, and then we'll do just go not retired. Now, where you get into the parentheses is when you want to combine things. So maybe we want to do, let's just go up here to the keyword because it's easy, probably easier to see. Maybe we want, we want to do, um, so let's do a group. So I'm doing a parentheses, like in algebra, maybe senior or um, president. So it can be either a senior or a pre or a president and maybe sales or marketing. And let me just pop that over to the Google Docs so you can kind of see. So in this case, what we'd be doing is, I would use this in title. So there's senior or president. 
that's kind of one bucket and they're being grouped together by the parentheses. And then the and is outside of the parentheses. And then we have another bucket right here that we're looking for. And because the word and in all caps is in here, it means that one variation of each of these has to all be present. So this could be senior and sales, could be senior and marketing, could be president and sales, president and marketing. So this is where you can combine them. Make sense? And again, there's a whole lot that you can do and wrangle using, using Boolean. There's a, a whole a whole nother topic probably. So, but that is what is happening there. What we typically do, and actually just because I'm sure it'll get asked, in SalesNav, you can do, you know, retired or freelance. And instead of using not, you can do the circle slash. It's a little bit easier, but that is not available in the normal search. In the normal search, you'll have to use the not, okay? Now, one final thing before I jump over to that Google Sheet is going to be uh, when you are in search in normal LinkedIn, you are limited to five Boolean operators. And if you add more than five, it'll crash. And it's really a pain because people don't realize that it's crashing because they're being too specific. You would, you would think that LinkedIn would say, hey, you're being very specific, great job. You add more than five, it'll crash. And they'll say, sorry, there are no search results. And you're going, are you serious? There are no search results? Wow, I must be being really specific. But it's just because they're only letting you do no more than five, which is kind of a bummer. So if you start messing with Boolean and you encounter that crash, keep it under five, okay? One final thing here, and then we will move into panelist discussion on this is, uh, what we do is, uh, we use this more agency wise as part of our onboarding process. But even if you're, if you fly solo, I think this would be very helpful for you to use because what happens is like you can save, you can do the search here and you can save the URL, but sometimes you don't want to retype everything. Or if, especially if you're in sales navigator, you can see if I need to change the title, there's no pencil edit. It's like, why, why is there no pencil edit? I don't want to, when you get really specific on here and you've got 20 things, I don't want to retype that every time. So what it's very helpful to do for the sake of editing and saving your URLs, and then maybe just to creating different, um, different saved searches for different people groups that you might want to engage with in the future. It's just very helpful to do here uh, in a Google Sheet. So I'd like to do that as well. And then we end up just doing, you know, like title inclusion, maybe food safety. And then hey, the, ex the exclusion, one second, we might do field like that and then build it out. What's up? A uh, question in the chat. Uh, does near Boolean work in LinkedIn? Does near Boolean? Uh, oh, like the, the, the all caps? Mm -hmm. No. Uh, no, I've, no. I'm, no, the near no. does not work. And there's also not a... Um, wild card. They don't do the wild card in the Boolean. So good, good question. So for those of you who are like, why would you think to ask that? Boolean is a, is a broad term used in multiple different languages. So there are other, in other places, there are other Boolean operators, but in LinkedIn search, it's really going to be limited to the and, not, or quotes, and then the parentheses. Okay. So I will stop talking because you're probably all sick of that. And let's move into panelist discussion. I'm going to stop sharing and uh, let me just, I'm going to read through some of the questions as well. Panelists, you know who you are. Feel free to, to chime in questions, comments. Now is your time. Does it matter uh, the order in which yes. you do the string? It absolutely matters the order. So what I would say do is, Google LinkedIn Boolean order of operation, because depend if you don't use the parentheses, there's going to be a default order. If you're doing or not, and LinkedIn will bucket them for you. So my default in praxis is always to use the, uh, the parentheses, but if you don't use the parentheses, especially yes. And I don't want to get into it because it's, it, it's going to be just easier for you to remember to bookmark that, but yeah, order of operation is what you're looking for. 
Absolutely. Well, Isaac, if you've got if you've got twenty OR commands, Bob or Tom or John or Frank or Sally, it doesn't matter what order any of those are in, does it? No, a long no. OR command it's, with twenty things, nothing matters no, on the order there. Only if you're using multiple operators, OR and NOT. Um, the other yep. point I would bring up is um, what you're looking at in your search does have to do with the size of your network, because uh, your proximity to second degree, third degree. Because I noticed in your page there, it showed all Kansas City, Missouri mm -hmm. um, yep. in your second degrees. So that's another reason to you know always be building your network. Yep, absolutely. The search results can change. So I might save a URL with parameters, give it to Judy. Judy will view the URL and her list of people will be different. Mm -hmm. Yep, absolutely. The same, sorry, the, the people will probably all be the same, but the order that they're served from front to back will change. Yep. Uh, panelists, any other thoughts, questions, any, any hacks you want to share? Got a couple minutes. No? Mike is the expert on bullying. Mike, come on, man. I got hacks to, well, I'm not a, I'm not a panelist. Sure you are. Yes, You're you are. Mike. Yeah, I've got some hacks to share. Let me show. Let me show you some killer hacks here. Okay. Can I? Uh, can I share? Absolutely. Uh, but let's keep it to under five minutes, just so we okay. have room for sure. open Q and A at the, at the end. Here's killer hacks. Um, you can like you like you had talked about your booleans. Sooner or later, your your clients are going to run into trouble if you do too many booleans in one blue bubble. I've got clients that that it crashes when we do more than nine more than 10 in one blue bubble. So I break them up according to similar things. And these are used in excluding. These are red bubbles. They turn blue first and then you turn them red and you can just keep going with it and going with it. Or, um, and you get into specialty stuff like you mentioned in certain areas. Um, I get into um, um, examples where I just grab the, the, I have some standard Boolean and I just paste that on into the profile URL in a text editor, so I don't have to enter that stuff in. I have standardized stuff across people. And that's this stuff here on the back end. There. Um, very often it's this is circle slash. So the stuff that's included is very small compared to the stuff that's excluded. We let this, we let the Boolean search do the scrubbing for us. But after we're done, we still scrub every, we, we add all these people to a lead list and then scrub the lead list. And then let the client scrub the lead list after that, and then it goes into our systems and stuff. But you can just grab and grab, grab and go code. I've deciphered all the codes on all the pro, all the URL stuff, and I put in the I put in the list here. Um, I put in the chat window uh, a URL to the LinkedIn industries that have been grouped together. So if you want to do like technology, that's a pretty popular one. You can say I'll take biotech all the way down here to whatever. So this is some ways to not have to, and, and this is a, uh, oops, control Z, command Z. <laughs> um, this, is a, uh, this is a way to, to kind of look at things kind of as a coding, control C, control V, instead of every time you, you click another industry, you want to you want to pick a hundred industries. Well, gee, you can just copy and paste this stuff in there. So that's it. That's my f less than five minutes stuff. If someone that's wants awesome. access to that document, contact me directly and uh, we'll talk about it, okay? Uh, one thing that you reminded me of, Mike, is this happens. So in, in normal LinkedIn search, you can't use more than five search operators. So this won't be an, a problem in normal search. If you're, if you're in sales nav and you have a really big list, like here I'm looking at all of these I'd want to exclude, I can actually type, like I'm copy pasting the whole thing in here and I can go like this, I can go exclude. Oh yeah, yep. Right, but you'll see when I hover, it might be kind of small. It cut. It's not actually remembering it all. It cuts it off. So you, the last few are forwarding or courier or customs BERT. So if you have a really long title exclusion or company exclusion in your in sales nav, using more than five, make sure after you enter it that you get a look. And make sure that's not cutting off prematurely. And so like what, what Mike was saying is then I'm going to say, all right, my last one that's not cut off is courier. So I'm going to go into that text editor, 
break it into, into two and then do two separate lines. Yeah, that that's that was a, it caused problems for us once because we had excluded a bunch of companies who were clients for, for our clients. So we wanted to exclude their clients from search and there's a big list. And I was like, sweet, it worked. Just copy, paste, exclude, <laughs> we're good to go. And then a while later, I'm like, why is, why is that company in here? They should definitely not be in here. And I hovered and I was like, oh crap, that's a big problem. So very important to keep in mind. All right, uh, let's see here. We've got about 10 minutes left. Anybody have any questions for panelists? And Mike, yes, you are a panelist. You just kind of got sick before we switched the, or you had surgery before we had the format change. So <laughs> don't worry. Uh, see, Kristen says text expander can help too. Yes, Chase has got a roll. Uh, anybody have any questions? Last one I see from Adams Gabbard is the near Boolean Good question. Any other questions on people search targeting? You can either drop it in the chat or you can do the hand raise and jump on the mic. I'm just gonna shout out real quick. Does, do these uh, techniques work in the recruiter platform as well? They do. So yeah, re for recruiter, uh, recruiter conceptually is very similar to sales navigator, but they use different labels on things. So where you'll see like a lead or account list in sales nav, you'll see project in recruiter. Um, but I, th I think that sales nav gives you a little bit more robust as far as what you can do with, with Boolean than recruiter does, but, uh, mess with it and just see what, what works and what doesn't. I forget off the top of my head, which fields in recruiter you can do all this stuff, but yeah. Cool. Yep. And we all just, we all just shot the invites to Mike because we're, we're, we love to see that document. That, that's good stuff, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Mike. I have it. I have it for LinkedIn as well. I've reverse engineered all the searches on LinkedIn and all the codes for all the fields there as well. Sweet. Let's see. David says, "I'm looking for principals, CEO, CTO in artificial intelligence, machine learning companies. Maybe able to get company names by industry studies. Forrester, any other good ideas through LinkedIn directly? Um, well, for CTO, I would say." I would do title search CTO. And this is where I would do, in a rare instance, I would use the keyword and I might apply artificial intelligence or machine learning as a keyword pass after, but after I've done title CTO. Yep, that's, that's a good question. For CEO, uh, that's just so broad. Uh, you could do the same thing, but I feel like you're gonna get a more, it's gonna be more muddied. You might wanna do, grab your companies first and then look for the owner of the companies first. Yeah. Just at a glance and, and anybody else feel free to chime in there. Any other questions? Shireen. Yeah. So I just had a question around, you know, are there limitations to how many search results you will get back on the unit from the phone that you are on? Or how many searches yeah. you actually can do, right? Um, I right. Do, you know what I mean? That's, that's a great question. So Shireen, there's a bit of background noise, so I'm gonna repeat it just to make sure that I heard you correctly. So Shireen is pointing out, if you have a free account, there are limitations on how many searches you can do per month. And that's, I totally forgot to say that. That is absolutely true. I, does anyone know what that is? I, I feel like it was, is not very many before they want you to pay. Is it like 30 a month? Does anybody know? Shireen, do you know how many there are free per month? I think it's 30, uh, Isaac. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of silly, but I guess use your searches wisely. <laughs> Which you can do alternatively, if you run out of, out of, uh, out of uh, free searches, you can use uh, Bing or Google and do a pretty, you can do a pretty stellar people search in a normal search engine yeah, using some some Boolean in the meta operands, uh, it's another conversation for another time. So if you do run out, maybe go down that rabbit hole. All right, we've got a couple more minutes. Open Q and A. Any final questions? Isaac, shoot. Uh, I was just wondering, I, I wasn't here the last two weeks, and I didn't find the recordings on the YouTube channel. When will those be uploaded? Uh, Monty was editing them yesterday. And so that's, uh, unfortunately, I don't do the editing. So I don't have a definitive answer for you. Sorry. Okay. 
hopefully, you know what you should do? You should send Monty a message and say, hey, man, I am just chomping at the bit to watch the replay. Will you get it over? Get it on with, brother. <laughs> I think this is one of the ones where the recording means the most here. This is a really good session with how to stuff. It's good. And it's and it's continuous how to stuff instead of here and then another good one here. It's a nice, really continuous how to on Boolean. The, the stuff you did on Boolean was was tremendous. Really, really good, Isaac. Thanks, bud. Gary, do you have any thoughts or want to chime in about uh, anything with multi-language just for everybody here who's international? Yeah, um, the search terms are different. So you have to use Boolean even more and uh, double up on the, um, for instance, if you search assistant accountant here in the Netherlands, uh, there's a, a letter difference. So I have to put in both because most of the people here uh, speak uh, bilingual. And both uh, terms are, are, are going to be used in LinkedIn. And that makes it even more difficult and the search strings longer. Mm. And, and um, opting out on a certain language is also not uh, very wise to do because uh, people here tend to uh, do everything in English anyhow. But if you want to see uh, smaller companies, then it's wise to uh, include the, the native language because you get a smaller list. Yeah. Do you see, so, so Gary, we're all using the same letters in the alphabet. Have you ever, or anybody here ever done anything where the entire platform is in totally different characters? Like I'm thinking Arabic, Hebrew, where it's, we're not using the Franco, German, whatever characters. Anybody well, have any experience one there? One of, one, one of my clients' last name has a, a, is R-O with the things on top of it, <laughs> E-L-L, -L, and it gets found with just R-O without the, without the things on it. So there's some logic behind the scenes that maps the O with the things to an O, it seems like. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the Enya, uh, on Manana, you know, the mm -hmm. kill the N seems to map to an N. So there's some mappings that happen, you know, it seems, and there's other ones that don't. Good luck talking in some of those other languages, but that's where there's a bit of crossover a little bit. You're going to Costa Rica in like a month. I see that more now. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm going December 29th. Cool. All right. Any final questions before we button it up for the week? Now's your, now's your time. Cool. I just had one I put in the chat. Um, you know, I don't know how many people actually use external apps like Salesflare or Trivia. Um, you know, I see that being so he's checking it out for the big podcast finder. So just curious about other external sources to help with the search. Yeah, so uh, Shireen, again, sorry, there's a, it sounds like maybe there's a fan, so I'm going to just repeat it just so that we can, uh, I want to get as good an answer as I can for you. My mic is just bad. Okay, it's time to No, answer. it's it's okay. I'm just trying to, whatever, <laughs> just want to help you out as much as we can. Thanks. So the, the Shireen was asking about the external apps, right? Like uh, inserts like Salesflare, Snob. So there are, uh, and even like, uh, I guess, Apollo, there are a number of applications that you can plug in search criteria and eventually they're going to be either pulling directly from LinkedIn or they're going to scrape the profiles, that kind of thing. Uh, that's what you're talking about, right, Shireen? Am I, am I understanding that right? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yep, so sometimes what those tools will do is they will let you do an input in different fields and then they'll basically do what Mike was showing and build the search. So sometimes that's what's going on. Sometimes they have their own internal database that includes a LinkedIn profile. So they're, they're totally relying on their own, just their own internal query process. And then the profile is associated with the person. They'll scrape it every once in a while, update the information and then serve it up that way. Uh, th they can absolutely be helpful, especially if you don't wanna pay for sales nav. And I think my favorite version of the, if I can use this like poor man's sales nav is gonna be Apollo. Apollo's uh, pretty solid for a lot less than sales nav. So, that's one thing you might want to check out, Shireen, too. Good, good question. Guys, yeah, I, I have one last tip for folks. Can I, can I throw out one? Hey, Absolutely. Hi, David. Absolutely. Hi, O'Neill. <laughs> We're chatting. Well, what, real, real quick one. When, when, you, when you want to break up a search that's very large, more than 2,500, 
okay? So you can't see them all. Yeah. Ways to break that up are either by location, if it's like you're doing the United States, we'll break it up by state, yep. or to break it up by industry. And if you do yep. both of either of those things, you won't miss anybody. When you're doing these booleans and stuff, you can try this and knots and all, and you leave a lot of folks on the, off, off the screen. But you will not miss anybody if you, if you segment it by industry or you segment it by state, um, yep. except with one little exception where the, the zip code is all zeros, okay? Except for those people. You want to kind of show that maybe? The yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. So in, in, even in sales nav, you limited to 2,500. So what you really want to do, if you want to get everybody, break it into pieces, like Mike just said, but just for a visual, you really want to choose a filter that can, it's like whatever filter you're choosing, it means that on the profile or on the company page, there's only one place, one option to select. And so it's if you're required. doing, and it's required. And it's required. So if you're doing company headcount, well, you know, what if you have multiple roles open? That's not a very good way to split it up because you're going to get some double hits in there. So geo by state or whatever you want to, however you want to split it up, geo it tends to be quite reliable at the person level, absolutely, because there's only one one location you can do. And then same thing with industry, every profile only has one industry selected and it's required. So those two are, are a great reliable way and even doing it together. If you're trying to grab a bunch of companies, then it's a little bit different. Same concept though. There's only going to be one geo. There's only going to be one industry, but you can also go, if you're grabbing the companies, it's a company, each company page only has one option for headcount. So in that situation on the company level, it would work. If you're looking at the, even the followers, they're definitely gonna follow, fall into one of those buckets. So a uh, little bit, you can be a little bit more broad there, but that's a great Excellent. point if you need to split it up. Yeah. I have a question. Shoot. Um, and I, I posted it, but I didn't see a response. I, I've done a lot of searches through Google a number of different times and I will take, I'll use the term in URL, linkedin.com mm -hmm. forward slash IN. Yep. And I assume I could use other things for groups. How much of LinkedIn do you think is actually indexed by the uh, SEs? So I would use Bing for that, actually. Uh, Bing tends to have a more fresh update on public profiles in Google Us. And then you might, if you're, if you're kind of technical, you can do the in URL, linkedin.com slash in for a person or slash company for companies. And you can also do like in, uh, I'm going I'm to say it wrong, but it's like in meta title because, and then maybe as the title, right? Because if right. you look at the search results for a person, it has their name and then their title. Right. So the title is, is meta. So you can say in the middle, include this and it's the title, not this. So you can actually do for free, I would use Bing, in the middle, in the meta title search for the include, not and exclude. Yeah, that's, any, that's probably it. Any idea how much is not uh, indexed in my, my question comes because I heard that there is a, a level of obfuscation that LinkedIn tries to do. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure, I don't have a percentage for you, David, sorry. If anybody else does chime in, but it's if the profile is set where the public profile is enabled, which is by default, then it is a public page on the internet and the search engine should eventually hit it. It may not be very frequently, but they should eventually hit it so I don't know the percentage of public profile versus not, but if it's public, it should eventually get hit and indexed. Okay, thanks. Yep. That's a, that's a great question. I would, and I would maybe go down that bunny trail, David, on the, the meta, in meta title with the include exclude there. Cause it's a great way if you, especially if you have a free account to do unlimited free searches. I think he, yep. I think uh, David came up with a great idea for a topic sometime and that is, searching outside of LinkedIn for LinkedIn people, you know, yeah. go, go through the Google searches and the hack URLs and all that yeah. stuff. That'd be a great topic, Isaac. I, I, I think that would be golden. Well, I think that what, depending on what you can actually extract that way and, and get at, uh, there's a lot of other filtering capability that you can do in spreadsheets and, and otherwise without having to deal with, you know, a direct display of the mm -hmm. selections from, you know, within LinkedIn. I mean, it's yep. really, an, to, for my purposes, 
there's more research that needs to go on after you do the extract, obviously. And I, I would assume that's the case for everybody. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you might want to check out, David, you might want to check out Apollo because Apollo, their, their process is they, I don't know what happens under the hood, but they've got a database of a lot of companies and a lot of people and their URLs, and it's pretty accurate. And they go and they do a refresh pretty regularly, and they'll allow you to just straight up do your search and then export as a CSV. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, we are just past the hour. If you heard the tornado sirens being tested here, <laughs> that's what was going on there. I'm <laughs> not going to die. Hopefully. Uh, any any <laughs> topic ideas for next week? While we're here, before I let you go, we could do the search outside of LinkedIn. I think that's one good idea. Any other? Uh, I might have Dimitri might be sharing on uh, some CRM sync tools, which he so that's a possibility. Any other suggestions? Yeah, CRM sync tools. I'm I'm quite interested in tools. I my whole career has been involved in a lot of IT and tools and, and the use of those types of things. So being able to do an extract and then do another extract based on that one is pretty yep. good. Yeah. Cool. There there's one right. there. Getting data getting data out of LinkedIn into systems. Just how to how to how to do that. Well, with with tools without the best tools, simplest. There's a there's a really good topic, David. I'd like that one. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, I'll put it in the queue. Everybody have a wonderful week. We'll see you next time. Thanks, everybody, for your time. Later. Thanks again, Isaac. Bye.